Hey, what's up? Back again. First base note hit me in the chest, and I was just like, there's no way that's too late. MB Enclosures it has his own YouTube channel, and this guy is an animal when it comes to designing boxes. And in the staying room, had a cuss, had a subscriber ask me this. He made this statement. He asked me, he said, hey man, how do you feel about uh curve ports and he said particularly that when he put a, a curve port on his enclosure or got a curve port enclosure that his bandwidth increased and i want to say then what happened was your previous box didn't have good bandwidth because the curve the curve port had nothing to do with your bandwidth increase and that's a myth serious myth a curve port really and truly gentlemen is just for cosmetic purposes. It's not going to add more bass. It's not going to have any more smoother transitioning from one note to the next than a slot port. And I'm going to tell you why. The most aerodynamic shape for a port is an aerial. Aerial meaning circular. Why? Because aerial means aerodynamic. There are no corners at all in a circular port. In a slot port, you have four. The bandwidth, the switching from one note to the next, is not as linear as the area port because of the four corners. Can you really hear the difference? Some can. I can. I can tell the difference between a circular port and a slot port. A circular port has a smoother transition from one note to the next. However, there's some instances where running a, a circular port, an aerial port, doesn't meet the criteria that I want, so I use predominantly slot ports because I'm looking for max output. With aerial ports, you can use a smaller uh, port. I talked about this hundreds of videos ago. With a slot port, you can dial that port in exactly where you wanted it. With the curve port design, individuals are trying to mimic the efficiency of a circular port by creating one side that's used as curved. But I have actually seen uh, enclosures where two sides are curved. Two sides. Left and right. But understand this. If you have not calculated for the kerf, because the kerf itself is not part of the enclosure, of the port. The kerf is not part of the port. So if you if you need to have 24 square inches in a two key box, and it, the port needs to be 24 inches long, the cross section area of the port itself. When the curve begins, the port ends. And I have seen and heard a lot of curve ported boxes that are tuned higher than what they said they were tuned at because the individual did not calculate the curve. And they thought the curve was part of the port, and actuality is not. The curve is just cosmetic. When it does promote smooth airflow, you can't tell me that one side. That, that side being curved is, is not promoting smooth airflow. It's not. You did the third law of thermodynamics or something like one of them laws. It's actually not. So you mean to tell me that because you have one side curved, that the air is only going to go to that side to go in to go in out the box. And remember I told you, the air, the port, even though it's ported, the air is not moving in and out the box as you would think. It's the air inside the port. The column of air inside the port is interacting with the air on the outside environment. It gives you the base that makes you think the air is going in and out the box. It's not going in and out the box. Should you, and it's the other question, well, should you have tapered around the edges? Yeah, you can. That's nice. But if you do your port area correctly, if you do your port area correctly in the Holy Trinity, the cone area, 
the X max and the volume, you should have no chuffing at your port interest. None at all. Whether you have a curve port or a slot port, the only difference you're going to hear between us uh, 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 between those two is when you bring a area port into the design. A curve port is just for cosmetics. That's it. It looks good. It's not promoting smooth trans, trans airflow over a slot. Possibly because it does have one side that creates a, for that column there to move a little bit more efficiency. But if your port area is correctly, it's correct. <laughs> it's not even utilizing the, the, the curve right there. It's not. That long, big bend, it's, there, there's nothing happening way out there. The air that's interacting with the outside environment is inside. The, is where the cross-section area is the same. The four corners. You can't calculate the cross-section area of the port into the box. It's not you're going to use it. Your tuning is going to be high. And that's what I find out with more curve. Well, are you going to, people know I can't get a curve from you? I don't do curve. That's not my lane. Can I do a curve? Yes. I just don't see the point of it. It makes the box bigger than necessary. And there is no discernible output advantage. Particularly since I know how to use my port area correctly. So it's not gaining me anything. Am I against them? No. I just told you what they're for. Cosmetic purposes only. No discernible difference. No discernible difference. Trust me. Uh, and that's just my opinion. From my research, I pretty much think it's a fact, but I will tell you, I, I will, I would uh, caveat to say, I would digress to say this. There has never been no documented proof that a curved port outperforms a slot port. Because there have been scores with guys in competition vehicles and the SQ setups where the curve won and where the curve lost in output. As far as what's louder, aerial or a slot, same thing applies. It has not been substantiated or proven, but there is a smoother transition from one note to the next when there is no corners in the port. No corners in the port, and I'm talking about at the exit, not inside the box. Because sometimes I'm telling you, I put some, some, I've seen people so much bracing and 45 in another corner, and it has no advantage. And they do all that, and they take away from the box volume that they had in the first place because they didn't calculate the volume that's left over with the big 45s they put inside the box and tell you that it's gonna make the box louder. That's a lie. <laughs> That's a lie. I don't I don't believe in gimmicks and tricks to get you to buy an enclosure. And that's not me. You're gonna to come to me if you want one and you don't have the materials to build it yourself, in my opinion. Because if you had the materials to build it yourself, you're gonna build it yourself. <laughs> this is a great thing. Uh, going out to a, a gentleman, uh, what box is this? Hey, what box is this? What box is this? A J oh, w Wendell Wilson. Yeah, Wendell Wilson. This is your boss, baby boy. Great stain. And I'm rubbing it right on in there. Hand rub, great stain. I should charge you extra for this one. <laughs> but now nah, my, my stains are the loud of black and gray. This is the gray stain. I put this on and then let it dry. And then we're gonna work on the outlet coating. Banner! Look at Shally coming up, getting excited. She ain't been in the camera. <laughs> get that, that, get that butt for me. Holler at y'all, peace.